Welcome to Powered by Instinct, a podcast for professionals who think about how your fundamental nature drives performance. In each episode, Colby experts will interview top performers, team leaders, consultants, and coaches to discuss identifying team members' strengths, aligning those strengths with their jobs, and optimizing individual and team performance. If you're interested in getting more done more naturally, then let's jump in. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Powered by Instinct podcast. My name is Amy Bruski. I'm the president of Colby Corp. And for our very first session, we have none other than Kathy Colby, the founder and the theorist of the Colby uh, concept. She is going to go over with us all about the Colby A index, what it is, how you can use it, and all of the different applications that stem from that that will make a difference for you in your work life, your personal life, relationships, parenting, You name it, we're going to get to it as we get through the Colby A. Kathy, for this conversation, I'd love to dive into what is the Colby A index? Well, the Colby A index is pretty simple, very straightforward. It is an assessment of your strengths, your natural abilities, the way you do creative problem solving. So it's not how smart you are. It's not your personality type at all. It's how do you get things done when you do it the best, when you do it your natural way. So what are your natural inclinations in problem solving? We've never had any way to measure that before because nobody understood the importance of this cognitive part of the mind. The ancient philosophers knew it was there. A couple centuries ago, some German guys talked about it, but nobody could make any money doing it because you couldn't improve it or change it. So, you know, if I can't bring you in and improve your cognitive abilities, why are you going to gain money from me? Well, what we found is it's worth a fortune because if you know what you're good at, you don't have to waste your time and have stress working against your brain. Now, when I first started developing the Colby A index, I wasn't sure how wide the difference would be, the the spreads. I didn't know if there'd be some people who were multiple times better at this than others. What I found was there actually wasn't a very big range. It's, it's not like an IQ score can be down in the 40s or 50s and up in the two, 300s. The range was, was not that great, but the significance of small differences mm-hmm. could be very important. For so instance, let's dive into that really yeah. quickly. What are the different modes? Because you've discovered there are these action modes that helps you describe someone's strengths. What are the modes? Well, as I mentioned, I started when I was nine or 10 years old writing descriptions. And it just happened there were four columns. And I would always add to these four columns. And, and they didn't have headers. Uh, they had people's, uh, a person's name. And, and so forever, those names will be in my head. But I didn't use those names. I used words like, Backfinder, the first mode that became evident to me was Backfinder because some people always ask you for more information. You give them the bottom line and they want to know why. You show you can do long, you can do short division. I, I know the answer to the number. I know in my head. And they said, no, you have to do the long division. You have to show you can do the work. I said, why do you need all these details when I could get to the bottom line? Well, I learned some programs in school, a lot of them are only looking, do you remember the details of the, mm-hmm. when there are four things to answer, each one is a petty little, it's not an idea, it's not a very, it's a, it's a word, it's a date, and it's, huh, mm-hmm. fact finding matters to a whole lot of right. people, and it matters in education. Didn't matter in my home, in our discussions, it didn't matter with friends, it mattered in school. And then there was this term that was also very easy, the follow through. Mm-hmm. My mother would say, you never follow through. You start dusting and you don't finish. You don't do every, my job was dusting. And she said, you don't finish, you don't follow through. And, and I would get that from other people. Well, sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. And so I started watching and I noticed, I wish sometimes the teachers wouldn't follow through. I wish they didn't always have this plan, plan and it stayed the same. I wish sometimes they just you know, messed it up. I wish sometimes just take a break. Mm-hmm. I mean, but there was this follow through nature some people have. And then the term quick start was just what people called me a lot of time. Well, it's just a quick start. You, do, you, you jump into it and do it before you even know what the danger is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
uh, it's taking a risk. The term implementer, I still think I was wrong. Everybody tells me I'm wrong. They're right, I was wrong, but I, I should have called it demonstrator. The implementer I saw is the use of tool or implement. And the reason I didn't want to use demonstrator is because you could demonstrate in different ways. You can do a quick demonstration, a thorough one, a consistent one. Now I realize more people resonate because the implementer category, as I use it, deals with space and the use of equipment, but the it, it's really the tangible. Mm -hmm. Later, I found each of these modes are on a scale from a whole lot of it and, and insisting on doing it to a very little of it in your nature, and you will resist doing it until the, you just until have, to. You have to. And in the middle, you will accommodate. So those zones, I realized, were part of the scale for each one of them. And now I realize the time zones. It's how much time we spend in the zone, as much as the type of effort. So it, it's become a three-dimensional kind of report. But the way I give the Colby report is to start by telling every single person who takes it, you got a perfect score. Great. And it's the truth, because Absolutely. we're all equal. Unless you lied, and I can tell if they did that, the, the score will show it if you didn't act intentionally and tell the truth. Right. Uh, and I did a, a group of teenage boys who were all homeless in a special program, and they, they kind of dissed it when they took it. And more than half of them came out in what I call corner of transition, which is a polite way of saying you lied. Um, and when I turned to them and said, you guys didn't give me the truth, they were dumbfounded that I could point at the ones that didn't do it. And they also started to cry because they saw their fellow students get the truth, which is, this is how wonderful they were. Mm -hmm. And they didn't get anything that was wonderful. I said, you're equally wonderful, but I, I can't tell you from this Colby A result what it is because you didn't tell the truth. So transition, it's fascinating that you can pick up on transition. Oh yeah. Um, I, another unique result is what we call facilitator, or sometimes you call it a mediator. Right? Well, Tell us about it, that. it's only unique in that 20% of the world, across the world, across all ages, genders, races, 20% will initiate in each of the modes. 20% mm -hmm. will prevent in each of them. Right. And then you'll have the other remaining 60% who accommodate. Now that's Naturally, it would be the 25, 50, 25, but 10% of people are in what we call transition. They're being forced to work against their grain and they're trying to accommodate that need. Mm -hmm. So they're in a lot of stress and reporting that stress. And we know they have to redo it later. The people who are naturally in that mid zone on three or more of the modes have this amazingly wonderful gift for accommodating the world. They accommodate the people around them. So they can prevent really bad conflicts and, and they can help interpret people to each other. They're, they're the peacemakers and, and they're the people who find ways of dealing with these outrageous differences. Mm -hmm. And they said, yeah, but we can come together in the middle and I'll help you do that. Sounds like every team needs one of these people. <laughs> every manager every... should be looking for a facilitator. That's right. You have five or more Bridging people. the differences. I mean, that's just magic. And the other thing you should do is at all costs, avoid the, and we have a term for it, inertia. Okay. Oh, avoid the inertia, the being stopped in your tracks of having too many people are alike that's the biggest mistake hiring managers make and line managers make line managers will say bring me in more people like joe no 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 yeah. no not cognitively like it maybe in terms of his enthusiasm and the affect maybe his intelligence and skills cognitively all managers should be looking for synergy now that's if you're managing a team that works interactively mm -hmm. if you've got a sales team that's not a team Right. Usually that is a group of salespeople who you hope are competing with each other for that trip to Hawaii. Sure. You know, they all need to use the same basic abilities and that they need to compete to be better. You probably want them to be more similar, right? If you yes. can figure out if, something about If you can figure out and we help you do that. That's consistent in the high performers, yeah. The Colby A results help you figure out if, if, who are our high performers in sales, have them all take it. You will say there's a pattern, right? a very strong pattern. We did this in the insurance industry. 
and I had global data all over the world. If you want a high performing insurance salesperson, mm -hmm. hire a quick start. Just mm -hmm. go get them. It doesn't matter what else they have. They have to have that. You can have a second suit and others. But if they don't have quick start, they're right. unlikely to ever be at that conference where they all went up each okay, other. Okay, so now that you're saying this, I, I, I just want to see if I can get a little bit of an interpretation from Kathy Colby because everyone, this, this is magic. I, I love the fact Perfect. that you're showing kind of this continuum of behavior yeah. that's a one to 10. You said something that's really interesting about time that it's a time continuum. So does that mean, for example, I've got this long eight in quick start line that I would spend more time there? Like tell yes. me a little bit about these numbers. You will spend most of your time initiating a quick start, even though it's a very fast thing for you. And that means you will initiate a lot. You have a lot of new ideas. You, mm -hmm. When you go into a meeting, you're thinking, how could we speed this up? How could we do it differently? Let's get right to the bottom line. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. And um, you talk fast because you need to get through all your sure. list of ideas fast. With a fact finder, you will sit in a meeting mm -hmm. where people are giving data and they're right. talking about the past. So that's because the red, yeah. Quick start deals with the future. Always the bottom line, that's the future. Where are we going? Where mm -hmm. are we headed? Let's get there. Fact finders deal with the past. They deal with evidence. Mm -hmm. They document. They want to know what happened before. Someone comes up, a quick start says, here's a great idea. Well, it didn't work the last three times we tried it. So the fact finder will use the evidence from the past to build the case for what we should move, do moving on. Yes. And that is the opposite of what I will do. Free to be myself. Well, I mean, documentation do. sounds painful. Well, you will tune out and instead sure. of writing it down, you're very good at having other people do that for you. Yes, absolutely. I want it done. I really yeah. value, you know, data driven decisions, but that is something that you value. So Tyrants, you value the people who document, you value history. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're asking me the history of some of what I've done. Well, sure. I have less fact finder than you do. I'm a two and <laughs> Kathy's finder. a two and I'm a three. Yeah. People keep saying, why have you never written a book on how you did all of that? Because that would put me in the past. Yes. I want to work in the future yes. with the things exactly. that I'm doing now and that matter ahead of now. Right. Uh, so both of us find ways to tune out when people start getting very specific. I think we've learned to be polite. You better than I. Um, <laughs> but we multitask, so we may be making a few notes and sort of kind of listening, but in our heads, we're somewhere else too. Sure. And so that's one of the many reasons for multitasking. What about the follow through? You are, that's fives right in the middle of the 10 zone. What is we, that? Mean? You are extremely accommodating to whatever system people want to use. Mm -hmm. So if people come in and say, okay, we just want to do a, a quick bottom line. Okay. You're well in it. No, we need to have a longer meeting and we need to come up with strategies. The fact finders do strategies. Mm -hmm. You will accommodate not doing strategy, but their the needs systems. to do it. Yeah. So yeah. you will accommodate what you do and you'll accommodate what you don't do by creating a system for having it happen. So you will organize the meeting to do something you won't do and sit through a whole meeting do, but sure. you'll organize it. Yeah. And it's, it's always better for me too, if someone else has a system that I can tweak and mess with. Oh too. yeah. You, so, use, you yeah. use electronic systems. You're right. really good with, with dealing with technology. Sure. I think, the best people with technology are in the middle of follow through mm. because they use it wisely without getting bogged down in the systems for the glory. Sometimes people just love the system. Oh, yeah. I love this game because the way it's played. I love the game if I can win. You know, it, well, I had a meeting with a woman yesterday who said, just five minutes before we met, I went back and put something on my list just so I could cross it off. So she was an eight in follow through. And I always love that example of the need to finish what you start. And I have that need, but just on certain things and not on others, yes. but that sense of closure. So I can accommodate every night way. before my mother went to bed. She had to have been an eight or nine and follow through. She'd do a list of everything she'd done that day. Well, it was already done. Yeah. Why did she need the list? Right. It, it's that peaceful, I finished what I intended sure. to do and I know what I did and now I know what I need to do tomorrow. Right. And, and Well, it's a need. You describe this as your instinctive needs. needs and what you just described says that. Okay, last one, implementer. What does that say? You would need for someone else to take the garbage out, for someone else <laughs> to cut and chop. You have a need for someone else to water the plants and mm -hmm. feed the dogs and 
you are not a hands-on problem solver. You're a, I see there's a problem over there. Who's going to go fix it? Yeah. And well, especially when it comes to, you said the word tools. I mean, just hearing tools gives me kind of uh, I, hives. I've seen you try to no, do a couple not... stitches. Um, it's yeah. just get out the glue or paste. It's no. not worth it. Well, unfortunately for my, my daughter, who is over here in the implementer when she was little would do all the crafts and need to do stuff and my goodness that is i i would avoid that even when i was a child that's that such a good example so many managers try to teach people how to do the job the right way mm -hmm. the right way is the way that works for the person sure it's not teaching them your way that worked for you and that's why we have this system with the colby a b and c because you can say this is who i am mm -hmm. From the A, with the B, you can say, and this is how I'm trying to do the job. With the C, someone in a position to evaluate you. It can be a line manager, an HR person, a CEO. They're saying, and this is the way I think this job should be done. This is what I want. Well, if you can't naturally accommodate it, mm -hmm. you're not going to be the best at that job. And you need to have a discussion that says, well, I'm trying, you can see with the B, I'm really trying to do it your way. That's the worst result, is when I see both the B and C differ from the A. Then I interfere as the consultant and say, you guys are putting this person under pressure. And by the way, you're putting yourself under pressure, right, Mr. Employee person. You all have to agree, that's not the way this person is going to succeed. Mm -hmm. If the job has to be done that way, then you need to be in a different role. If there's opportunities to do it differently, give him the freedom to do it his way and right. give yourself that freedom. Right. I sometimes find the B is off kilter, but the C isn't. So the person in the job mm -hmm. is saying, I'm fighting against my own grain. It's not working. I go home exhausted. Right. And the manager saying, I'm trying to tell you, you don't have to do it that way. Yeah. Why That's, do you think that happens? <clears throat> well, I think if the last person who was in the job or someone else in mm -hmm. the job who works near you is doing it that way, yeah. you get a belief system, an affective sure. belief that that's what has that to happen. That there's one right way to do it. Yeah. I have so to... the role of management <clears throat> always has to be do it your way. Yes. As long as you have the right skills that are necessary, cognitively do it the way that works for you. Sure. Nobody said you had to read it first and then do it. And if they did and that's not what you do, ignore it. Don't read it, yeah. skip over it, do as it, and go back. As long as they get excellent results, right? Yeah. It, yeah. It's like test prep for an SAT. Right. It, so much of that is stupid because it teaches you how to do it the way the person teaching sure. it got a good SAT score. I got great SAT scores. Why? I guess yeah. I know testing and I guess all the way through how they developed the right. test and what they would have said is the right answer. So does this change? So what you're describing, can I change these numbers based on how I see my job? This is who you are. This is how you were created. Right. You were created to be perfectly creative. Yeah. If you mess with that, it's on you. Every bit you mess with the freedom to give yourself the opportunity to be you, right. you're messing with your success. I think people find it hard to believe that they shouldn't just keep retaking it. And, and well, we get a lot of those questions, like, would it change if I was taking it at home? Or, you know, I was thinking only about certain situations. Almost so, always they're fact finders. And I laugh and I said, no, you're proving what a fact finder you are. <laughs> you just want more data. Right. Uh, you know, I just, fine, go ahead. Every, every, I'd love it if you paid us to have everybody do it several times <laughs> right. in terms of economic, but I don't, wouldn't love it as a time to help the world. Yeah. Why are you not accepting the truth? What is right. it you don't like about right. this? And the truth is usually, I don't want to be like my old man. Or most of the people who succeed in this company have more sure. of this or that. There are You have a value around certain results. There are companies sure. and cultural biases. And a church, I was helping a church deal with the people who were on the staff at the church, the music the yeah. director, then this person. And... There was this high, high, high emphasis on follow through is godliness, and the rest of you are all defying the Lord. And Goodness. <laughs> yeah. And I had to say to them, you know what? I do believe there's a higher power, and I do believe he made this differently on purpose, and I do believe he thinks synergy is a good thing. And you can try to prove that higher power wrong. Yeah. That's not my job. Yeah. And and they ended up laughing. I mean, it's it is a there's a cognitive bias in some organizations because the CEO is a quick start. Sure. And so they think, oh, you're not going to 
reach the top if you're not right. a quick start. A good quick start boss knows you must be surrounded by people who are not quick starts. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there is competition. And it's not likely, nor is she likely to do it. I've talked with so many CEOs who say, I won't let a CEO be in the C-suite. Yeah. One of us is enough. So you're, you're telling me about that church situation. It <laughs> makes me think back to when you said, even from the time you're a child, you have these instincts, you're unique. It's something well, that's great about born. you. Tell me about kids taking us. Like, what would you say to parents? Well, because sure. parents get their indexes. What do we do with kids? Well, we now are able to identify MOs mm -hmm. from babies. Only I am trained to do that, but I, I'll train you. Mm -hmm. um, I am training a few other people to be able to do it with three-year-olds. Right. Uh, and it's called Brainiac. And that is a nonverbal where I watch on video, so I'm not in the room, mm -hmm. and the people in the room make no effort to evaluate it. They just run the video. And we see how kids, I, I don't give away any secrets, it's a bunch of stuff. Yeah. And we watch what they do with it. And in, in a minimum of 15, I never allow more than 15 minutes, I can see the MO. I uh, always have a second person who I try and observe at the same time. And I'm always involved mm -hmm. at this stage right. because uh, until I have a, a couple thousand where we have the data means we have to wait until they grow up enough to do the why, right. because the why is the next one. Well, that's the and SAQ that's now, is, right? Student oh, aptitude quiz. Student, yeah. yeah. See, I forget the name. Why was so much easier? Yeah. Student aptitude the quiz. The student aptitude quiz. I love, love, love mm -hmm. because it tells kids flat out you're perfect. And it tells them how and why, and it says, do this, don't do that. Yes. It's very directive. We have found using it with another instrument I've developed and, and validated, which is the student efficacy test. I now can identify the at-risk kids for suicide or bullying. Mm -hmm. So we can see, not it's not their student aptitude quiz result, but paired with we can see their strengths and how they do things, and we can see whether they believe in their abilities mm -hmm. or are arrogant. How old are you doing? What age kids would do the student well, aptitude quiz? Because of the online, that can be mm -hmm. done online, it's 13. 13, okay. It's 13 yeah. year olds uh, through high school. Right. The high school kids who've had jobs, so 16, right. 17 year olds can use the A. The student aptitude quiz is proving to be absolutely fabulous in schools because it's a very quick overview for a teacher mm -hmm. to be able to see this is what I have to do and not do with this kid. Sure. And I'm, I'm developing some other materials that will be announced very soon that are going to make it even easier for teachers. Mm -hmm. The patterns, which have become famous with the people who know I'm working on it. That's great. I'm well, and, I, and the parents need it so much. So even if the teachers don't get it, for a parent to know that about but, their child, the child needs to know it because they really need well, that validation. A, yeah. But the parents, I find it so hard as a parent sometimes not to impose the way you get things done on your kids. It's just kind of human nature. This worked for me when I was in school. Do that. So I That's think right. all around, That's it right. has to be the kid, the teacher, and the parent. It's even hard as a grandparent. Not yeah. Say, well, I did it this way. Absolutely. What the SAQ, the Student Aptitude Quiz, does is builds the self-efficacy of the kid, mm -hmm. helps them believe in themselves, understand their strengths. It doesn't tell them the world will be wonderful, but what it ties into is the op gig, which is what I call our career program. Mm -hmm. And they find out that there are at least 20 jobs they would be great at, and it takes 12 hundred jobs, and they see the percent probability of success. So they can say, I'd really like to be, oh, I'd, I'd have a 92% probability of doing it. All right. The ones that they choose that they're most interested in, they can click on and see jobs available for that role within 100 miles and what it pays and what education they need. Oh, what I love about that is it marries what they're interested in with how they naturally get things done because those two have to go hand in hand. And is it realistic? There are any jobs available, and for most of sure. them in this world, there are. That's getting very practical. Yeah. What happens when we do that is self-efficacy goes up, mm -hmm. and the kids were at risk because they were so, they felt unwanted, unneeded, unappreciated. All of a sudden, the, huh, all these things I can do really well. Right. And I, I, I want them to feel that. Sure. I want them to feel equal, not better. 
I don't want arrogance. I want equality. What we're teaching is knock it off with the arrogance because you're not a bit better than anybody else. And I don't want to hear the stupid stuff about you're not any good. I've proven to you you're equal. So let's just all talk about equality and we will reduce suicide levels. We're already doing it in some right. places. And maybe we'll shut down those arrogant jerks. That's what we're trying to do in the middle schools and high schools. That's unbelievable. Oh. I mean, that's the hope for the future. I send audios along with those. So the kids hear a voice mm-hmm. saying you're perfect. Yeah. They hear a voice kind of with a tease, are you going to try doing this? Um, they hear some practical information. They have um, audio on the SAQs. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that's excellent. Do you know that a whole lot of adults don't know the A has an audio? I know. This is our good time Just to remind crazy. everybody. There's audio on your Colby A result, and you can go back and visit it at any time. You can go I, back I, into like your I result. It's sitting there. I personally call you up on the phone and tell you how <laughs> wonderful you are, and you don't pick up the People phone. People love hearing your voice. They say, Kathy's talking to me directly. But they don't all know. Yes, yeah. you all have it. Yes. And if you haven't heard it, if you have a Colby result and you haven't heard the audio, go back and Absolutely. get it. Absolutely. Go back it's and listen online. to it. Yes. It's online. Yeah. It's so easy to get. Just please, I spent so much time caring about you. Well, so let's tell people how they, obviously you can go to Colby.com, K-O-L-B-E.com for the A index, um, the B index that you talked about too, and the other assessments. There's links from Colby.com over to take the student aptitude quiz and the op gig, or you can go directly to dynamind.com, yep. which is D Y N A M Y N D. Am I still in that right? Dot com. Okay, Kathy, anything else that you want to, a parting word you want to leave people with about taking the A index and why they should do it? You know, this pandemic has been really hard. And I think all of us have had personal doubts at some time, and we've wondered what's going on in the world. What am I? good for doing, what what's going to happen. It just feels yucky. It's just nothing feels as good as it should. You haven't changed. You have the same abilities you had when you were at the top of your game. You haven't lost any of this ability. You can create and do creative problem solving as well as you ever have. Get back in your game. Believe in yourself. Go listen to your Colby result. Go read it again. Share it with the people in their lives who are doubting themselves. Get them to do it at whatever age or stage they're in. When you hear someone say, I'm no good for anything, yes, they are. They're equal to you and everybody else. Get them to take the Colby index that's appropriate to their age and stage. It will tell them they're perfect and you can continue the conversation. Don't let them down. Don't let yourself down. Do it. All right, everyone. It is time to wrap up. We want to thank Kathy Colby for being our guest today. If you you want to find out more about what Kathy's doing, please head over to dynamine.com. And to find out more about the different solutions that we have and find the freedom to be yourself, please come see us at colby.com. Thank you. Thanks for checking out this episode of Powered by Instinct. This show is brought to you by Colby Corp a company that helps leaders and organizations thrive using the only instinctive strengths assessment on the market. If you enjoyed this episode, then follow Powered by Instinct wherever you get your favorite podcasts or join us online at kobe.com slash podcast for all the latest episodes.